Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So, you know, yesterday um, was obviously a holiday for so many people, a third of the world, basically. And we did this one over on Patreon exclusively. And, and we do want to thank all our new Patreons. As we've, we've had about 10, 10 people have joined for this particular video. Um, it, it's just amazing what's going down. And honestly, the deeper down this rabbit hole you go, the more unbelievable it seems to be. But it is the case and it is the reality. Uh, you know, there's so much more that we want to share with you guys in, in the time that we are allotted. And it feels like that because this is April 1st. Happy April Fool's Day. Hopefully nobody got you too bad out there. Happy April Fool's. Oh, hooray. Yeah, we could have done something like, okay, well, we quit, yeah, you know. <laughs> but but well, no. We're not that creative. But no, we're not that creative. <laughs> uh, but what we do have going on, and I, I wanted to touch on this because, you know, April, if you've been following uh, what we've been talking about, we've I we've been really watching timelines solidify for... Um, the last couple of years it, it, and going back to when I first started the channel, I always knew uh, that when the second eclipse came by, it's pretty much over for the United States as you know it and also for the NATO power structure. And you know, I always wanted to share that. And I got the nickname Old Doom and Gloom from uh, one of my closest friends of about 10 years way back in the 90s. I was talking about this crap. And sure, you know, back in the 90s, those were the good old days. Yeah, we, you know, we had grunge music and, you know, the hair metal wasn't too far off in the past. You know, life was simpler. But yet, you know, these times, these times, well, you know, hey, this is the great reset that has been spoken of. And I do think it all unravels in April and it's going to go down really pretty quickly. So here you see two top Iranian commanders, General Mohammad Reza Zahedi and General Haj Rahimi, Rahimi, among many other Iranian forces uh, killed today in Israeli airstrikes against the Iranian embassy compound in the city of Damascus. Damascus, yes, we know... <laughs> Bible prophecy about Damascus being destroyed, you know, and so many people uh, think that we're seeing uh, the, be, you know, the coming around of Ezekiel and Gog and Magog. Yeah, you know, all this is stuff I've been familiar with uh, going back to the 70s. And, you know, this is a big strike nonetheless. This is, uh, as people say here, war intelligence. Things are not looking good in Syria. No, they're not looking good in Syria. They're not looking good anywhere around the globe. Uh, at this particular time, if we want to have peace, what we have to realize is they are using humanity to destroy itself yet again. Now, the main uh, target could have been the Iranian uh, ambassador he and his family are in iran at the moment um it, it is still ramadan so ramadan ends on the ninth and you might see reprisals on the ninth which is the day after the eclipse uh and it might be massive it might be massive or it still may slow boil there's uh you know a lot going on out there well there's plenty going on um even if even at a slow boil there is plenty going on I, I do not think that everything is going to happen in an instant, in a flash, but I do think they're going to continue on with uh, the little, you know, death by a thousand cuts through throughout uh, the world, throughout the planet, through throughout people's lives, you know, as above, so below. And, and the morale, you know, on a local level, <coughs> the morale on a local level is low as is the morale on a on a higher governmental level. So it is, it's just a slow kind of drowning of, of hu humanity and they're putting war and death and destruction in its place on so many levels. And it's like we, we really have to keep our heads above water right now. We do, we do. And, you know, does it hit you that it feels in so many ways 
like Israel truly does believe. It's it's above the law and above reprisal, or at least the leadership. Because again, I think the case is for humanity in general that the vast majority of people are absolutely clueless. Absolutely clueless. Don't understand what's really going on in the bigger picture. Now, of our subscribers and, and you know, you that watch us every day, I, I think you guys get it. But we're in the minority here. <laughs> That's the thing. Most people don't really get the bigger picture. Most people are still, um, well, you know, I'm looking at this person. You know, they're using labels, 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 labels. Um, Cindy and I are, we're not Christian. We're not Jewish. We're not Muslims. And we're not even really, we wouldn't even consider ourselves Hindu, um, anything. We're not labeling ourselves. We're, we're not Democrats. We're not Republicans. At one time I was thinking, well, maybe I'm closest to line with the libertarian point of view, but not exactly, because I don't think that we should have any of these sorts of governments. So the problem is when we start labeling it, it creates an us versus them environment. And so many of the people in this world, they, they don't even understand that concept. They cannot understand that concept. Uh, this Sarah, who covers a lot of what's happening in the atrocities against um, the people of Gaza, again, another label, independent. She labels herself independent, but she's Lebanese, and, you know, she talks about you know geopolitical situation we, what would it take for humans just to simply think of themselves as part of this planet is it possible our indoctrination is so complete in the minds of so many people that i don't think they're going to be able to shed it in this life so i think a lot of people will uh, but again, are we going to save the entire world from death and destruction? Uh, no. Will the majority of the world uh, go to the grave in this life still holding its prejudices and its ideologies which are system-based? Unfortunately, it looks likely that the majority will uh, go that route. But even if we awaken a small percentage, it's still the, the, the seed of something new. And when I think to the little tribes that are often these remote places that we might view as so primitive, right? Looking up at planes from above. I, I've seen these pictures of these tribesmen holding spears. And they're living the same way that their ancestors have lived forever. And they're really unaffected by our wars unless it comes and blows away or start they start tearing down their rainforests, which which has happened. To them, uh, everything that's happening on this planet, they might not ever notice it. But maybe they are the vestiges, the leftovers of those that made it through the last reset. You know, I mean, this is probably as simple as, as I can as I can see how to put things with this picture here on the screen, it says God miraculously conquered Jericho. And, and a big reason why we don't believe in that big Bible is because we know if you replace the word, the source of all miraculously, miraculously conquered Jericho, we know that is not true. It, a God, but if you put God, an alien entity, miraculously conquered Jericho. That's the truth. That would be the truth. So that's why we had to have a hard time subscribing to the Bible when this is all over the place. Um, it's just as that that's as simple as I can put it. And we really get demonized for that. Well, let's look at Jericho, because if you read it in the actual uh, Hebrew, it's it's Yahweh. It's a singular entity called Yahweh. Yahweh. Yahweh's Ark, not God's Ark, not, not the creator of this universe, your Ark, Yahweh's Ark. Yeah, you know, they, here you go, after Joshua given orders to the troops, the seven priests carrying the seven ram's horns ahead of Yahweh marched off as they blew their horns. 
the uh, ark of Yahweh's promise followed them. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. You know, this, this is what it is. And by the way, they killed every man, woman, and child, but yet they put the gold and the silver and everything made of bronze and iron into Yahweh's treasury. And they spared the prostitute who betrayed her own people. This is how the system works. This is, what, this is how the system bribes your politicians. You can be uh, king. You can be president. You could be prime minister. You could be Klaus. You could be anybody. But, you know, you have to obey the system. And so this, this just shows you the whole system. As long as they are willing to obey the other, you know, uh, the, obey the higher <laughs> demons that, that give us all this, then, you know, they will benefit and they will be lifted up into positions of authority. And they do that. And it's unraveling. You know, look at what's coming out about P. Diddy. The Canaanites now... You know, th what, what does the system do? Well, it gives you reason and rationale. And I've had good friends say, well, you know, the Canaanites were destroyed because they were all giants. They were all Nephilim there. Look, we're like grasshoppers to them. Yeah, this is exactly what the system does when it wants to get rid of a threat. It wants to get rid of somebody that has an active pineal gland. It wants to get rid of somebody that's not part of the system. And so, you know, this is a short read for you guys. It, it, it's only a couple hundred pages. Destruction of the Canaanites uh, by, by Charlie Trim. Um, you know, read it in one night. And, you know, it just, again, touches on, on some of, you know, what really did go on there. Well, it, again, it's justification. You know, look at Columbus. He's revered. We, were, we, we grew up with him being revered. He was a slave trader. That committed genocide, or it started a genocide. This is a dark, dark entity. And it's it's like the system is going to put up statues to Gil Bates. It'll put up statues to Schwab Klaus. It'll put up statues to J.B., Putin, G. And the history books will say what amazing men they were who liberated humanity. This is exactly what the system does time and time again. It, 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 it's, again, very, very ritualistic, very symbolic. Yeah, because they are invoking demons from other dimensions. And this is what we were talking about with CERN. CERN really is opening up portals to other densities to let in dark demonic entities the likes of which we have never seen visibly in our lives and, and the energy of which would be intolerable for most to be around into this particular realm, which is not their natural realm. It, it's it's very simple to go through the Bible and just pick out one, one thing after the next when they use the word Lord. That needs to be replaced with the word alien entity. And after you really start looking at it, you can see all of the technologies, everything that Jericho was a technology. It's all technology. Now we can see that. It's just a matter of getting people to open up and not be so upset when they hear that somebody doesn't believe in the Bible. You know, it's like, why would we believe in the Bible? Sure, there's nice things in there. But do you not think that that's the controllers wanting to loop humanity into something? I don't think people have read it. And if you do put the word alien in there or AI or when they're describing something in the sky, they could put the word spaceship in there. People really would change their tune, I feel. Yeah. And, and there are parts of the Bible where it literally says alien gods, literally says alien gods. And what you're looking at here is more ancient, this depiction of who? Yahweh. That's Yahweh right there. This is more ancient than any evidence that we have biblically of Yahweh. This is more ancient than any part of the Pentateuch, any part of the five books of Moses. It, it's, it's 800 BC is what, what, what is agreed upon. And it talks about him with his consort, Asherah. You know, so again, you, what you see is, is, again, the revisionist history that comes along. 
as Yahweh was a being that was able to be seen physically walking on the planet. Now, L, which again, they're used interchangeably in our modern translations, but there's the Elohist text and there's the Yahwist text. L, we know, was a Canaanite storm god, which when we feel into the energy of L, it's not malevolent like Yahweh. It's not dark. It, it actually feels like it's some sort of programming of the natural matrix. So, you know, El was a storm god that then when the Israelites came and took over Canaan, there were still people there that were worshiping El. And so it got assimilated in and, you know, eventually transplanted with Yahweh. And again, the original version of uh, the creation story in the Bible is Elohim, which is in plural. So, you know, again, this is just what goes on. This system is one of nonstop genocide. As you see, Homeland Security back in the day, finding terrorism since 1492, because again, you know, Columbus was a genocidal slave trader that was working for the crown. Where does the Bible even come from? It comes from royalty. It comes from Roman emperors. You know, this is, again, another case of who really is the savage? Sure, there was fighting uh, amongst, you know, tribes. There's, there's always been that going on, and we were still in a darker age, so consciousness was not expanded. As you see, you know, this is this is in the, in the United States, and, and these are people that lost their lives in the Native American wars. Uh huh. And what happened to the Native American people here uh, in the Americas was atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. They had to conform. Thanksgiving, a special time to remember all the things we have and forget about the genocide that was committed to get it. As you know, we were just talking about Easter, and you know, some will say, well, it's a pagan holiday, you know. Well, do you really understand the Christian heritage? Because, you know, again, you talk about the persecution of the Christians. Uh, yeah, that was the first um, couple hundred years before um, they formulated the modern day Christianity and what it was going to encompass and then gave us that and persecuted every other form of Christianity that was out there. And since that point, they've been the persecutors. And, you know, Islam persecutes too, obviously, because Islam means to submit. To submit to who? To submit to the will of Allah, which is another translation. As far as I've been able to see, Allah literally uh, is another translation of Elohim. And, you know, yet we can also see remnants of uh, Nanar Sin and other quote-unquote, lunar gods, and we've talked about the lunar issue as, you know, it's, it's again, in writing, more ancient than anything biblically, that the moon, uh, the, the people remembered when the moon was brought here. Absolutely. It's been brought here by the system, and people will laugh about that and say, yeah, but you, you've heard of Plato and Aristotle, haven't you? Well, you know, their writings are some of the most quoted writings of all time. They predate uh, anything really that we have scripturally from the Bible. And yet there's references from them of a time uh, of, of having heard stories from people that have uh, passed down orally memories of when the moon was brought here. And it's from different cultures. Absolutely. So, you know, while these are all about Thanksgiving, it, it get, you know, Easter is just another holiday on the opposite side of the calendar. Uh, and yet, you know, sure, it does have pagan roots, but so does Christianity. You know, it was started by a Roman emperor who was devoted to Sol Invictus, but then created Christianity because, you know, if you can't beat them, you might as well join them and you might as well then... Uh, create a, a form of which can be utilized to control the minds of the masses. And as we've said, Christianity is completely on a same train track barreling towards Islam because they've both been created for that express purpose. 
because again all you really need is love and compassion and <laughs> you don't need the dogma but people's connection to the earth itself was severed and they had to conform they had to drop their way of dress and everything and they had to adopt the way of the system this is what the conquerors do it's it's a system built on the blood sweat and bones of all those that came before you really have to stop and question <clears throat> how many times they justified the atrocities by saying well they were just savages they weren't christians they didn't believe in god we were doing them a favor and then a few pictures ago on the screen you can see all of these men with their guns and throwing other men into a ditch you know and they're claiming the men that are in the ditch and dead and stiff and and gone and they no longer are able to care for their families they're claiming that they're the savages so it's just really a truly a very very sad story that we live and they have little children subscribe i remember when i was in kindergarten you know they were handing out uh coloring books with with uh columbus and in the ships and having us memorize our our proud proud history and it never felt right it, it just never felt right and like wait a minute, you know, they, they, they uh, came here and they, I, I mean, in, in the third grade, I, I could understand that this is just not right. And we're living here today, we're reliving that history, and it's still not right. And, and I think what we hope to do is to get people to think for themselves, use your critical thinking, understand that the belief system is how they control you. It's very important that they lasso your belief system as a spiritual being and point it in a direction that is going to benefit them. And really, it's tough to say, but that's all it is. They, they only want control. They don't want to better humanity. They just want control. Absolutely. And so we did a video, um, the last one we did, talking about microplastics and microplastics found in ancient dig sites ancient archaeological dig sites there should be no plastics down there if the history that we're given is true but then there shouldn't be 2.8 billion year old spheres that we see here there are so many anomalous objects cindy and i have witnessed tons of anomalous objects out in the desert um concrete where it shouldn't be uh, it, you know it's just crazy and in these indentures in rocks that look like they were made by something extremely heavy and metallic with rounded ends in a tripod formation out in the middle of the desert where nobody ever built anything of any consequence i mean other than you know little huts by the natives what did that come from i mean this our history is not what we're told it's not even what it's told. So we're in a Groundhog's Day, so to speak. We are in a Groundhog's Day. And in literally, like Cindy was saying, I wouldn't be surprised if we dig down in, in the yard, go down 50 feet, you might find a house just like ours, buried underneath the ground from you know, maybe uh, several hundred years ago, where people were doing the same thing and the system had a reset, and there we go again. And I understand it's mind blowing, but the reality is, in so many ways, we really are living in an alien ant farm, and they are watching us, and they're watching everything that we do, doing these experiments on uh, what they view as their creation. But then at the same time, every soul is a part of Source, the one source. And so, you know, you don't have the condition where they created your souls. No, they've just modified your body, which is just your vehicle for this experience. And understand with the modification of your body, they've put filters where you are not able to see as much as you might have. So that we are working under that handicap and giving each other grace and understanding and forgiveness <clears throat> and helping each other where we can that's what's going to help pull us up and out of this because mother nature has a way to bring herself back to blueprint status and we are headed that way now and that's why the controllers are getting a little bit frantic 
trying to um, ratchet everyone down so that maybe they won't recognize, oh, um, you know, these abilities we have, they're kind of coming up like, <laughs> like whack-a-mole, you know, it's like, oh, there's one, better, better kill it. Oh, there's another one. Oh, better kill it. They're, they're doing their very, very best. And there is a way to step out of that in front of that train. And, and we just need to make the effort. Absolutely. So yeah, 2.8 billion year old spheres found in South Africa. Th that should be a clue that we're going through this Groundhog Day and there's been high uh, civilizations here. And again, Earth is just a, a remnant of what was a much bigger planet called Tiamat. So, uh, you know, again, when Roger over at Mud Fossil University is talking about giants that are hundreds of feet tall, it might seem preposterous. But no, that's the explanation. Tiamat was much, much larger than what Earth currently is. There were beings that were titanic <laughs> compared to any that we know now. So as always, guys, look forward to your comments. Please do share these videos. Awaken the planet. Let's shift the paradigm together. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.